Oh, hi, it's Chandra Easton here. I thought I'd um, chat to you about the um, retrograde Mercury that's uh, coming up uh, in the next few days and the impact uh, that it may well have during its three-week period when it's retrograde. Uh, Mercury turns retrograde twice a year and uh, it's always a time and an opportunity for us as individuals and indeed as nations to reflect. Mm, so I'll talk a little bit about this from an astrological perspective. As I said, my name's Chandra. I'm from StarAstrologyHealing.com. Going to look at a few of the um, nations of the world and uh, just reflect on um, the Mercury retrograde. But before I do that, I'll just talk broadly about um, the configurations that I see in the chart. So one of the first things to notice is the sun's at the end of uh, Sagittarius uh, in technically what we refer to as a void of course position. Now when um, any planet, but especially one of the luminaries like the sun, is void of course, you could say that it's a bit like we're betwixt and between. Uh, this three week period it's like a ball's gone up in the air and it hasn't come down and it's very difficult to predict where and in what way it will come down. There's an enormous amount of variability um, and, and positions can change quite dramatically. That can be individual positions, uh, national positions, global positions. That's just simply the void of course sun in the sort of uh, 29th degree of Sagittarius. Uh, yeah, now, the other thing to say about this Mercury retrograde is that, um, you know, it does happen twice a year, but this particular year, Mercury's conjunct Pluto. And, uh, well, Pluto is either to do with the misuse of power on a global level, um, or it's to do with the death throes of, of old societies and old ways of governing, or it can be the... Um, uh, crushing repression through bureaucratic and uh, government control of people. Uh, the none of those are positive. Uh, I suppose you could say that the positive that comes out of Mercury, Pluto, in Capricorn conjunct, and they are combust actually, extremely close together, is that eventually those people who are prepared to look deeply will be able to see through um, lies, distortion, repression, coercion, um, power games uh, to, to the light supernal, which is um, from the inner spiritual realms. So searching for truth beyond one's prejudices, beyond one's political um, affiliations, beyond uh, black and white scenarios. It's human nature to think that um, in terms of blacks or whites, right or wrong, good or bad, uh, but in fact there are so many variations within ourselves, within our loved ones, within our families, within the nations, within the global politic. So seeing deeply beyond our own um, distortions and prejudices to what is, that's what Mercury is asking us to do. And, and so you could say we all need to have a really long, cold, hard look in the mirror and not deflect from the stark reality of what we see in our lives. Okay. The best that we can hope for with Mercury combust Pluto in the middle degrees, what's referred to as the cross quarters degrees, is that we have um, radical insights and we can move forward with radical change or radical forgiveness or radical authenticity. And I use the word radical because Mercury is being pulled by the squared Uranus to sort of snap us out and wake us up out of... Um, helplessness, hopelessness, self-denial, lying to ourselves, accepting the lies of others, um, feeling disempowered. You know, when Mercury and Pluto are together like this, then the Mercury is literally, it's like under the heel of, of those that hold power. And Uranus is asking us to rise up and to liberate ourselves. And there's all kinds of reasons why we give our power away. And sometimes it's because we're not able to look at ourselves clearly in the mirror. So if we want to change the world, we need to start with ourselves with a long, hard, cold look 
and what it is that we need to change and snap out of it and wake up and get on with it and and reclaim our power. Okay, looking further at this chart, there are three planets in Pisces and the south nodes in Pisces. Mars is in Pisces as well as Chiron and Neptune. And uh, I suppose a good analogy for this is a bit like getting stuck in a swamp and the more you struggle, the deeper you swim. So you could say that humanity is stuck in a swamp of its own making. We have created our own astral illusion. We have we've developed, we've created the astral world would not exist if we didn't feed it with our emotionalism with our fantasies, with our hopes with our dreams, with our expectations with our uh, unwillingness to see truth, with our emotional content so you could say that we have created a swamp and we're all slowly drowning within it uh, that's the combination of these three planets in uh, Pisces conjunct the south node. Now, in according to physical um, laws, if we come upon a person um, sinking in a swamp, we shouldn't jump in with them. We need to stand on solid ground and then throw them a lifeline. And so Mercury in Capricorn is asking us to stand on the solid ground of the truth of the fact that we are we are one and that division and separation uh, is not a real it's not real on the on the inner levels uh, we are one humanity and it's up to us to realize this truth and begin to act in that way would be no point jumping in uh, to the quagmire with the person who's sinking it would certainly be no point walking away and averting our eyes and pretending that we're not aware that someone's sinking but we need to marshal help. We need to marshal lifelines and bridges and um, the light of hope and courage and uh, truth and to get out of our own way. That's the only way that we will uh, be able to, if you like, rescue ourselves and rescue our brothers and sisters, rescue humanity. The difficulty with this configuration in Pisces is that there's a lot of despair and a lot of hopelessness and a lot of disillusion and a lot of fear. They're all the reasons why we've collectively sunk so low. Uh, the goal and the, the way forward uh, is, is through the North Node in Virgo and the North Node's in the sixth degree of Virgo and well this is about um, small acts of kindness and if we want to change the world we have to change ourselves and our immediate environment and our habits and what we eat and how we spend our money on what we spend our money on and and uh, our well-being one person and one step at a time you know that sort of terminology uh, think global act local uh, that's the advice during this Mercury retrograde period. As I said, it goes for three weeks from the 20th of December. And in Australia, that's just before 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. But the exact movement of Mercury retrograde will vary place to place around the world. And, it, and it's until the 10th of January in Australia. Okay. Um, yeah, Saturn's in Sagittarius. Mm, with the square to the moon, you could say um, we have to we have to be very mindful of of how we use our energy. It's very easy um, to scatter our energy over this three week period and and avoid the big issues and fail to work with the energy of truth. So we need to focus. You know, this chart looks like things are way out of focus. Yeah. Okay, now what I'll do now is I'll have a look at the chart and I'm going to compare it to some of the different um, charts of the various nations. Uh, there's so much going on on the planet, it's really hard to know kind of where to start. But I might, um, I'll start with the American chart. Now, as I said, Mercury and Pluto are, are conjunct, combust actually, in the cross quarters. I'll talk a little bit about the cross quarters. The cross quarters are the middle degrees of... of um, one of the elements 
so the cross quarters of the cardinal signs, that's the middle degrees of Capricorn, Cancer, Aries and Libra. And Mercury and Pluto are in the, in the cross quarters of Capricorn. Now Capricorn is associated with um, spiritual purpose and spiritual effort, but it's also associated with governments and worldly power. So you could say that we have to choose which authority uh, we follow and which authority we um, bow down to. Do we do we bow down to the heart, to the humanity, to the innate oneness that unites us all, or do we bow down and take sides between black and white and good and bad and all of that? Okay, so I'll have a look at the... And what I'm going to do is compare the position of the Mercury-Pluto to the different national charts, just to see if I can hazard a guess at some of the responses that will be happening on a global level. Um, during this three-week period. And of course, um, I look at the American chart, I think, to start with, and I think immediately that, that um, we have a president in waiting, uh, Trump's waiting, to take office. And uh, if I look at the Declaration of Independence, the, the um, national chart of the United States of America, um, then Mercury-Pluto falls on the Dharma point. Okay, uh, so the Dharma point is directly opposite the sun. The American chart, the sun's in the 13th degree of Cancer and the Dharma point is therefore in the 13th degree of Capricorn. So you could say that this three-week period it is pivotal for uh, the American nation to pick up its Dharma, its role, to find where it stands as a nation, um, as a United States, is it united or is it is it not united? Uh, does it uphold the the principles of the Declaration of Independence? And also, where does it stand in the world arena? So you see, it, it's a bit like um, imagine a play happening, and and one of the main um, actors is meant to come on and stand in a certain place and begin a certain dialogue at a certain time and that's pivotal to the unfolding of the play. So this three week period from the 20th of December, could be the 19th I think in America, through uh, until the, I think it'll be the 9th of January, is pivotal for the United States moving into its dharmic position on the world stage. So there'll be a great amount of behind-the-scenes decision-making as to where the United States stands and who, who they, what they stand for, what the principles are. And of course, to me, this is intrinsically linked to the um, incoming uh, President Trump. I won't say any more about that, really. I, I guess the other thing that I'll say is that, is that in the United States chart, Saturn has a very tight square to this Dharma point. So um, they potentially, the United States can potentially make enormous karma on the global, um, in, in the global arena if they fail to take up their true position on the world stage. You know, if, if an act is meant to come in and open a soliloquy on, let's say, justice, which would be the soliloquy for the United States who have Saturn and Libra, but if instead um, a, a two-bit actor comes in and starts talking about something other than justice, then you could say then they would fail to take up their dharmic position and fail not only themselves as a nation, but the failure would permeate out into the global situation. So it's very, very pivotal what the United States decides between the 19th of December and the 9th of January, and the inauguration of the new president happens on the 21st. OK, I'm going to jump around a little bit. There's so much more I could say, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm looking at the nation of Syria, uh, and the birth date for the nation of Syria is the 1st of January 1944. Um, the date that I have here is a midnight birth. I don't recall why that um, was given, and it may or may not be the exact birthing of the nation, but I have a feeling it's correct. Uh, the sun, the natal sun for the Syrian people is in the ninth degree of Capricorn. And if it is a midnight chart, then the 15th degree of Capricorn is the IC. It's the lowest point in the chart. It's the bedrock. Uh, when, Mer when the Mercury-Pluto, this need to shine the light of reason, hits the bedrock of a national chart, you could say that... Um, 
the light is being shone upon the bedrock of the nation. You know, I look at the chart and I just, I just had this feeling that it's a graveyard of hope, that the, the hopes of the Syrian people have been um, held up for the last five years and uh, I think there's a graveyard now for all these hopes. Yeah. Um, if it is a midnight chart, then that would make uh, the 13th degree of Libra as the ascendant, which is the same position as the United States Saturn. So there's a link here between the karma of the American people and the American nation and the emerging, emerging destiny of the Syrian people and the Syrian nation. Uh, Mercury Pluto square this Libra ascendant. It's it's unlikely that justice. Um, it's far too late, it seems, for justice for the Syrian people. We have a graveyard of hope. Yeah, I'll continue looking very briefly at the different charts. I thought I'd have a look at the Chinese chart. We have. Um, China in the news a lot lately, mainly with its expansion into the South China Sea and it's literally building islands for territorial position. Uh, the birth of the People's Republic of China, the natal chart, is the 1st of October 1949. It's cast for three, two minutes, almost two minutes past three in the afternoon in Beijing. Uh, this chart has uh, many, many planets in Libra and this south node or the past karmic position uh, is in the 16th degree of Libra. So Mercury and Pluto in Capricorn come up and they form a tight square to the nodal axis. I, I guess what I'd say is that the People's Republic of China are entering onto the world stage in a new and different and dramatic way. They have a Libra stellium in the natal chart, but it sits all clustered around. Uh, well, Neptune and Mercury are very close to the south node point, so you could say they've been held back or they've been operating without full power or full conviction or full equality. Now the Mercury Pluto, the best one could hope for is an opportunity for the liberalisation and the, the arising of uh, individual uh, rights of freedom of speech. Uh, what we're liable to see I would say is, is, is fairly aggressive, um, more expansionist policy where uh, China takes up effectively more of its space on the world, on the stage of the world arena. So we may have a, um, let's let's call it a, a puppet president or a populist president coming in, uh, failing to make his speech and and make decisions or policies based on justice. Meanwhile, we have the Chinese um, chart coming to the foreground, um, and you could say flexing its um, its muscles in its neighbourhood. And I say in its neighbourhood because the north node in Aries sits on the third house cusp. So whatever China considers to be its neighbourhood, you know, that could be Australia, this could be some of the South Pacific Islands, it clearly uh, could be some of the um, uh, territory that's currently claiming South China. What do we know? It's hard to say what China considers to be its neighbourhood, but expect this to be expanded. Um, the other thing to say about the relationship between the Mercury retrograde and the Chinese chart is that in the Chinese chart, Mars and Pluto sit in very close conjunction in Leo. So they are, are a power and an authority and fairly not negotiable um, autocratic first ray energy comes up through this. And this first ray energy is, is being um, tested. Uh, by the Mercury Pluto. So there may well be uh, more people wanting more freedom of speech and more democracy and the issue of Taiwan, all kinds of issues where the people want some of their power back and the people shine the light of truth out. Interesting to see what happens in China in that three week period. I'll jump across to look at, um, hmm, where did I have it? I've got a chart somewhere. Let me find it for Russia. And I've cast this. There's a bit of astrologers disagree a little bit or they debate a little bit on uh, which chart to use for Russia. I've 
decided to use what's referred to as the Minsk, Minsk Agreement, and this is for the 8th of December, is that the right one? Yeah, the 8th of December 1991, uh, and this is when the flag was lowered um, and the uh, effective um, unravelling of the USSR occurred. A very interesting chart. There are four planets in Sagittarius and four planets in Capricorn, what we refer to as a double stellium. You know, this is, this is a nation not to be messed with. This is a nation of great... Um, let's say, uh, will, determination, uh, uh, domination, expansionism, and a Leo rising. Yes. So if I take the Mingst Agreement and I uh, compare the Mercury retrograde in Capricorn, it falls right on top of the Moon and Neptune, which are also in Capricorn in this national chart. So effectively what we have is the Moon and Neptune. The Moon and Neptune in Capricorn is a bit like, um, oh, I get the impression of, you know, a sleight of hand of a magician, you know, say one thing and do another. Um, you know, what do they call it? Misdirection, where a magician will point you in one direction, meanwhile there's something else pivotal happening in the other direction and you failed to look that way because you were looking in the way they'd misdirected you. So that's their approach, that's the Russian approach, is misdirection and and then using the element of surprise. And that's because Uranus, the Moon and Neptune are all uh, involved in a triple conjunction around this um, cross-quarters point in Capricorn. So into this comes the Mercury-Pluto uh, retrograde. So be prepared and on the lookout for major Russian misdirection um, and, and followed by some kind of fairly dramatic, um, I don't know, whether you say sleight of hand or some dramatic turn of events in this three-week period. The, the, the Russian nation and Vladimir Putin in particular will, will move fairly dramatically in this three-week period and it will, will not be according to um, what the public expect and, and of course, remember that it's very easy for the Americans to paint the Russians as all black and all evil and trying to control their elections. Meanwhile, the Russians paint the Americans as the same. And the truth is far, far more greyer and more subtle and somewhere. How can we find the truth in the midst of all the geopolitics, the, the war for oil, wars, the multiple wars for oil that have been going on for... Um, decades, ever since the Second World War, really. Yeah, so I expect action um, fairly dramatic uh, and behind-the-scenes action from the, the Russian nation. Um, yeah. I think I'll leave it at that, and I'll just jump across now to the Australian chart, and we are such a small player on the world stage, but being an Australian, I couldn't help but have a look at, excuse me, what the Mercury-Pluto, where it lands on our, what we refer to as our Federation of Australia birth chart, which is uh, cast for the 1st of January 1901 in Sydney. Uh, in the the afternoon. Now, the Australian chart, we have the Sun in Capricorn in the 10th degree. So the Mercury-Pluto conjunction, it's five degrees, five or six degrees away, yeah, five degrees away from the Sun. It's making a wide conjunction to our national identity. So you could say um, the degree of repression or the degree of... Um, um, coercion or the degree of um, corporations in the era of governments is all, it's all relative. What we may consider to be a loss of democracy in Australia would be perfectly acceptable in, let's say, another country with this far more repressive regime. So there's more room for change and more hope, one would say, for um, the light of clarity and the light of truth to be shone on our government practices. And as I say that, I, I reflect upon the ABC, the national broadcaster, our, our remaining voice of hope and reason and, and um, taking no partisan, no policy, um, no government uh, 
political party's position, but a, a, an attempt to bring an even-minded assessment. If we lose our national broadcaster uh, and the funding to our national broadcaster, we lose freedom of speech. When we lose freedom of speech, we lose democracy. So we need to fight for um, the right to speak up. So many of the um, privileges and things that we would have taken for granted as Australians, you know, even a decade ago, have all been, um, you know, legislated away on the basis of the need to protect us. And so we've lost a lot of our... Um, uh, freedoms, freedom of privacy is gone, you know, freedom, I could go on about it for forever, all kinds of freedoms are gone, but we need to maintain and um, the light of truth and shine it into government practices and government dirty deals and government principles. Yep. Okay, I think that's probably all I'll say about um, uh, the mercury as it uh, affects just a few charts. Yeah, um, on an on an individual level and on a personal and yeah, just on a personal level, trying to sort of deal with the Mercury retrograde, it really depends on where it falls in your chart. If you have any planets in the middle degrees of Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, or Libra, then you won't be able to avoid this need for facing up to yourself, telling it how it is, looking oneself in the mirror, taking the action that's necessary, examining oneself in the cold light of truth. Of course we all um, can benefit from that, but if you have any personal planets, the sun, the moon, inner planets or the ascendant or the midheaven, in this sort of, you know, let's say the 13th to the 18th degree of the cardinal signs, then you need to clean up your own act and a great time to do that, time for reflection and it's, of course this is across the holy season. So a time to withdraw from the materialistic world um, and contemplate the things that are real and long-lasting. Uh, you know, the, the um, contemplate the things that we have in, in common with our humanity and with the earth and with animals and uh, treasure those. Okay, hopefully that's interesting. Uh, and of course I'm always available. Uh, I work as a, an astrologer. You can contact me through my website starastrologyhealing.com and I can give you some insight into your year ahead and the patterns that are um, around you to help you with your decision making over the next 12 months. Good to connect. Bye for now.